Magandang umaga po ulit sa inyong lahat. Salamat. Uh, ngayon pong umaga, today, uh, is the start of our new series in the Gospel of Mark. So we will have a series of uh, six uh, sermons, messages, and it will uh, conclude with a video. Hindi ko po na isulat, alin mo na ko isulat yung title ng video na Father of Lights. So, ito po yung uh, series natin, Jesus and the Good News, Jesus and the Disciples, Jesus and Peter, Jesus and the Authorities, Jesus and the Cross, Jesus and the Empty Tomb. So, bago po tayo tumuloy sa uh, basahin natin yung maliliit na, na story zone, we will uh, first have an overview of the outline ng uh, Gospel of Mark. Uh, nabasa niyo na po ba yung chapter 17 ng Gospel of Mark? Hanggang 16 lang po yung Gospel of Mark. Kung nabasa niyo yung chapter 17, baka may nakahanap ko yung manuscript na matagal nang nawawala. Anyway, yung uh, yung kung uh, Gospel of Mark, we can read it as a story or a drama in three acts. Alam ko, mahilig po kayo sa drama. Di po ba? Karami sa inyo na nagsusubaybay ng mga telenovela sa, sa TV, di ba? Uh, Mark is also a drama. We can read it as a drama. Meron siyang tatlong uh, acts. The first one is uh, Galilee. The second one, chapter 8, verse 22 to chapter 10. The Act 2 on the way to Jerusalem and Act 3 is in Jerusalem. So geographically, pwede natin i-divide yung Gospel of Mark. Sa umpisa, meron siyang heading and prologue uh, story, behind the story, which will be our sermon today. So makikita natin dito sa, sa outline pa lang na ito, ang Gospel of Mark is kakaiba kaysa sa ibang Gospels. Sa ibang Gospels, si Jesus Christ goes back and forth from Galilee, to Jerusalem, balik na naman, uh, Samaria. But in the Gospel of Mark, Jesus stays in Galilee and then goes to Jerusalem one time. So, sa kanya, hindi importante kung bumalik-balik pa si Jesus doon. What is important to Mark is the journey of Jesus Christ to Jerusalem, to the cross. Alam niya mamamatay siya, but he goes to Jerusalem anyway. And kung may title akong gusto ilagay sa Mark, siguro maganda yung one-way ticket to the cross. Kasi diretso lang talaga si Jesus Christ. Sa so, so Act 1, sa Galilee, uh, nag-start si Jesus ng proclamation ng gospel niya. He trains his disciples, nag-preach siya, and then there starts yung uh, opposition ng mga, ng mga kahawa niya. He does miracles, he walks on water, pero pati mga disciple niya, hindi alam kung hindi kilala kung sino siya. They don't understand. This. And sa Act 2, which is uh, sandwiched by two stories of healing ng blind men, uh, papunta na si Jesus sa Jerusalem. At sunod-sunod yung mga disciples niya, na tatakot sila, and he's teaching them about discipleship as they walk towards Jerusalem. So with the back Brown na yung leader namin mamamatay. <laughs> Sabi na mamamatay siya. And uh, they, he is teaching them about discipleship. He teaches them that he's a different kind of savior. Pero ayaw talaga nila maniwala. And lastly, yung Act 3, Jesus, pagdating niya ng Jerusalem, si celebrate yung mga tao, but he creates trouble in uh, the temple. Talagang confrontation na ng mga uh, religious leaders and the establishment. So he is arrested, he is tortured, and crucified. As lahat ng disciples niya, they all leave him behind. And Mark ends his gospel sa empty tomb. Ang totoong ending po ng gospel of Mark is hanggang verse 8 lang po. So yung tanod sa dulo, uh, balik manuscript, din nagdag po yun. Kasi parang bitin yung ending daw ng Mark. Parang, uy, empty yung tomb. Tapos na yung story. 
Mark's uh, purpose is to tell Jesus' story up to the empty tomb. Hanggang doon lang siya. Hindi niya nakikwento pa yung uh, when Jesus rises and teaches the disciples after his death. So yun po yung uh, Gospel of Mark in uh, a nutshell. So let's go to our main message today. Jesus and the Good News from Mark chapter 1 verses 1 to 3. Bago natin ito basahin na uh, kayo po ba? Okay. Ano pala? Before this, uh, I challenge you to read the Gospel of Mark. Na, uh, uh, basahin nyo lahat from chapter 1 to chapter 17. Uh, you can read it. Gusto ko po sana kasi unang sa room sabi ko sana kasi the Gospel of Mark is a gospel meant to be read orally. Talaga po, ano siya, kasi yung time na yun, yung mga tao doon, hindi po nga nung magbasa. And yung uh, writer o narrator, talagang babasahin niya ng malakas. Sinubukan ko kung basahin ng malakas yung Tagalog version ng part, kaya lang inabot na yung isang oras at kalahati. Kaya kung baka i-walk outan niyo ako pag pinasa pa yung uh, Gospel of Mark, hindi yan ng isang oras at kalahati. <coughs> so, the challenge is for you to read the Gospel of Mark, pwede niyo siyang basahin according to the outline, three times. Uh, yung unang act, and yung act 2 and act 3, or you can read 3 chapters a day, so yung 16, 15, 5 days, tapos yun na po siya, mga 30 minutes each, so meron daw survey na ginawa, sabi ni Roger Stone tungkol sa mga Christians na talaga makita mo na may transformation sa life nila, they are active in ministry, they are active in, uh, they are generous, and uh, Ang kita sa buhay nila yung bunga ng uh, gospel na nagayon sinabi ni Pastor Nicas kanina. And I did a survey, these people, ang common denominator sa kanila is they read the Bible, study the Bible, reflect on the Bible at least three times a week. Yung medyo malalim na mga 30 minutes siguro na pag babasa at pag nilay nilay ng Bible. So for us, kailangan din po natin ito na washing of the word it's very important for our participation in God's nature. So yun po yung challenge sa atin ngayon. Bago sana matapos yung December, matapos na natin yung Gospel of Mark. Yung by December, ang series naman po natin na is a series on Christmas messages. Kaya anim lang po yung sa mga pa. So Jesus and the Good News. Nag-experience na po ba kayo na may nagkwento sa inyo? Uh, kunyari, si ganyo, si ganyan, may sinabi, o inaway siya, o ipinahiya siya, at naniwala kayo sa kanya. Tapos later, nalaman nyo, may nagkwento naman sa inyo, meron din palang uh, iba pang kwento. No? Meron pala na hindi kwento sa inyo, pero palang story behind the story. So, naka-experience na po ba kayo ng ganyan? Palagay ko hindi pa, no? Wala pa na naka-experience sa atin ng ganyan, ano? Na may nagpwento sa inyo, tapos sa mayan. Oh, eh, pala mayroon pa po lang sa kapila. So, uh, mayroon. Nakala ko, wala pa. Nakala ko, wala pa. Nakala ko, wala pa. Pero, yung kung Mark chapter 1, verses 1 to uh, 13, is like that, no? It's the story behind the story. Diyan sa chapter 1, verses 1 to 13, makikita natin yung mga characters dyan is uh, the Holy Spirit, Jesus Christ, Satan, angels. So, the story is prepares the readers. Nasa likod po siya. Na parang behind the earthly story is the cosmic story. So, that's how Mark starts. And, uh, so let's read Mark chapter 1, verses 1 to 30. The story behind the story. Sabi ni Mark sa NIV po ito God. This is the good news about Jesus Christ, the Son of God. It began as the prophet Isaiah had written. God said, I will send my messenger ahead of you to open the way for you. 
Someone is shouting in the desert. Get the road ready for the Lord. Make a straight path for Him to travel. Parang hindi yata na yung phone. So John appeared in the desert, baptizing and preaching. Turn away from your sins and be baptized, he told the people. And God will forgive your sins. Many people from the province of Judea and the city of Jerusalem went out to hear John. They confessed their sins and he baptized them in the Jordan River. John wore clothes made of camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist and his food was locusts and wild honey. He announced to the people, the man who will come after me is much greater than I am. I am not good enough even to bend down and untie his sandals. I baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. Verse 9, Not long afterwards, Jesus came from Nazareth in the province of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. As soon as Jesus came up out of the water, he saw heaven opening and the Spirit coming down on him like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, You are my own dear son. I am pleased with you. At once the Spirit made him go into the desert, where he stayed for forty days, being tempted by Satan, wild animals, were there also, but angels came and helped or served him. So here we see the story behind the story. Kayong ah, kung baga may unang kwento, pero mayroong pang kwento sa ito. At ito yung inuna ni Mark. Kamukha ng gasp, kamukha ng story ni The Book of Job, di ba? Nabasa niyo na po ba yung Book of Job? Opo, yung unang dalawang chapter, ang scene nasa heaven. Before kinento yung paghihirap, yung temptation kay Job, yung test kay Job, hindi pala temptation eh, yung temptation pala ang tukso. Yung test po sa kanya, pinakita muna yung nangyayari sa kalangitan. In the same way here in Mark, we have that. Hindi sa lahat nangyayari, pero mga, yung mga character sa kwento ay mga out of this world. Si Jesus, the Son of God. Si John, na ang damit is camel's hair and ano, uh, pagkain niya, locust. Si the Holy Spirit, si Satan, and the angels. So that's what we have here. So after these first 13 verses, Mark starts with Jesus telling the story among ordinary human beings. He starts with Jesus proclaiming the good news, the coming of God's kingdom, and the calling of the first disciples. But the people in the story, the disciples, the crowds, the authorities, they do not know the story behind the story. Pero tayo alam natin as the readers and the, the audience. So in verse 14 to 20, we read the beginning of the story. Malit pala. After John had been put in prison, Jesus went to Galilee and preached the good news. The right time has come, he said, and the kingdom of God is near. Turn away from your sins and believe the good news. As Jesus walked along the shore of Lake Galilee, he saw two fishermen, Simon and his brother Andrew, catching fish with a net. Jesus said to them, Come with me and I will teach you to catch people. At once they left their nets and went with him. He went a little farther on and saw two other brothers, James and John, the sons of Zebedee. They were in their boat getting their nets ready. As soon as Jesus saw them, he called them. They left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men and went with Jesus. So here is the beginning of this story in quotation marks. So what do the stories tell? What does Mark 1 verses 1 to 20 tell us? Mamis po ba natin yun? Sabi doon. It tells us God has a good news for us. A message of great hope. 
Peter in our series in the first epistle of Peter told us na meron tayo living hope. We have a living hope. Mark tells us this hope in greater uh, uh, in greater detail. This good news is about Jesus, the Messiah, our living hope. Kaya na ako nito ni uh, Pastor Tikach ng tungkol dun sa tao na nakabili na uh, pumunta siya sa isang garage sale. Siguro, bili niya nun, siguro 500 dollars yata. Hindi niya alam yung sabi niya, kung maganda yata ito, hindi na lang niya sa jeweler. Nung tinignan ng jeweler, sabi niya, mukhang pa-virgin egg yata yan. Nung tinignan ng magkano yung presyo sa, sa misiyo, uh, 33 million dollars. <laughs> Napulot niya doon sa so Diba? Parang, sabi niya, ito yung good news parang na minsan pag matagal na kasi parang nawawala na yung uh, kina na ba? Well, kaya yung story, no? yung si, uh, si Fred at si Rhonda na mag-asawa. Si Fred, natatakot siya na baka raw na bibingi na yung asawa niya. Kaya punta siya sa doktor at nagkonsulta. Sabi ng doktor sa kanya, ito gawin mo, pag-uwi mo. Pagdating mo sa may date nyo, sigawan niya siya, ah, honey, anong ulam natin? Pag hindi niya nadinig, hindi ka niya sinagot, ah, punta ka sa pinto ng bahay mo. Doon, sigawan mo ulit siya. Niya, honey, anong ulam natin? Pag hindi pa rin sumagot, pumasok ka doon sa may dining, sa sala nyo, doon mo siya tanungin. Pag hindi pa rin, oh, go to the door of the kitchen, at pag hindi talaga, Uh, mas lapitan mo na talaga sa likod, tanongin mo ano mo lang. So, ganun nga ginawa ni Fred, pag-uwi niya. Pagdating niya sa gate, pala, pagpasok niya ng gate, sinig uh, sinigawan niya yung asawa niya na nagluluto, sabi niya. Ronda, anong ulam natin? Mm. Gantay siya. Walang sagot. Pasok niya sa pinto ng bahay. Sabi niya, Honey, ano ulam natin? Siya. Wala eh. Tapos siya doon, pasok siya sa sala, sabi niya, Honey, yan ang ulam natin! Wala, wala talaga ang sagot. Doon na siya sa pinto ng kusina, ay kortika. Honey, yan ang ulam natin! Talaga, wala talaga. Ilapitan niya na sa likod. Love, anong ulam natin? Sabi niya sa kanya, Bingi ka ba? Nandun ka pala sa git, sinisigaw ko na sa'yo. At doon po ulam natin! <laughs> Shout, shout, wala yung, shout, wala yung bingi, ano? Hindi pala yung masawa. Minsan nakala natin bingi ang Diyos. Hindi natin naririnig kung ano sinasabi niya sa atin. Hindi mo naririnig ang panalangin ko, hindi mo naririnig yung pinadaan ko. Sabi ng Diyos, bingi ka ba? Tayo pala yung hindi nakakalinig sa sinasabi niya sa atin. Jesus has a good news for us. And this is what Mark is telling us, no? Kailangan madinig. Kailangan madinig yung good news. Mahirap, uh, no, na, baka kailangan lang na linisan ng konti yung mga tenga. So how do we know it's a good news? From wow, saan sa Mark, no? Uh, Doon muna, balik muna tayo. Uh, thank you. So yung, well, in verse 1, it says right there, the good news about Jesus Christ. And in verse 2, I will send my messenger ahead of you. And in verse 3, the voice of one calling in the wilderness. Verse 4, baptizing in the desert or wilderness. Baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. Baptize, baptize you with the Holy Spirit. Verse 8, the heaven being torn open and the Spirit descending on him, Jesus Then verse 12, sent him out into the wilderness, in the desert. Jesus came proclaiming the good news, verse 15, of God. No? Verse 15, the kingdom of God is near. And uh, verse 15, repent, believe, trust the good news. And verse 17, come, follow me, this great invitation. The good news In Greek is, as we know, yon gel yon, yun yung uh, salita. Parang ganun yung pangalan sa, sa batang lalaki, yon gel yon. May pangalan natin. <laughs> so, 
<laughs> you know, the verb is Yohan Gilidso, you know, to bring glad tidings, magdala ng magandang balita. We find this verb in such passages of Old Testament as in Isaiah 14, verse 9. Uh, you who bring good tidings to Zion, go up on a high mountain. You who bring good tidings to Jerusalem, lift up your voice with a shout. Lift up, do not be afraid. Say to the towns of Judah, here is your God. No? Ito rin po yung ginamit na verb dun sa isa pang verse sa Isaiah. How beautiful are the feet of those who bring glad tidings. So, you ang gilitso. Noong unang panahon, bago dumating yung hari, mula sa pagkapanalo niya sa digmaan, meron munang messenger na pinapadala. And the messenger brings the good news to the people na nalo tayo. Natalo yung China. Ay, hindi pala. Hello, my. So, uh, we, uh, maraming, ano, maraming sasalihin niya na nanalo tayo, nanalo. So, people, they start, uh, they start preparing. Yung mga singers, nag-prepare na. Yung mga dancers, nag-prepare na. They prepare the mga banderitas para pagdating ng hari. Ang nakahanda na lahat. Pati bulaklak sa kalsada. So, this is why God sends, sent John the Baptist first to prepare the way. And Jesus has come. He has come to proclaim the good news of God. So what is this good news about? What is this good news about? Number one, it's a good news about Jesus Christ. It's a good news about the person of Christ. Sabi dito sa sabi ni Mark sa so verse 1 pala this is the good news about Jesus Christ the Son of God. Oh, and it's a verse uh, 15 You are my Son whom I love with you I am well pleased. Jesus is revealed in the first chapter of Mark through the different titles. Siya yung magbabaptize ng Holy Spirit, sabi ni John the Baptist, which is gawain ni Yahweh mismo sa Old Testament. It is Yahweh who baptizes people with the Spirit. He is the conqueror of Satan. He defeats Satan. And the angels serve Him. The Gospel is about this person. Etong tao na ito na magbaptize ng Holy Spirit, the Son of God, conqueror of Satan and the captain of angels. Sometimes, uh, yun pong, sometimes we forget, ano po, Jesus Christ, kung sinabing Jesus Christ, uh, ano po yung sabihin ng Christ? So, Parang sinabi lang, parang karuntong lang ng pangalan. No? Parang yung middle name lang. So, so Christ, alam natin Messiah. What is Messiah? So, kung tinanong mo yung mga ita, ano yung Christ? Ano yung Kristo? Hindi na alam. Oh, ano yung Messiah? Messiah means God's chosen one to be king. Siya yung inaantay ng mga Israelites. Maging king, magiging tagapagligtas nila. Siya pinili ng Diyos maging hari hindi lang sa lupa, sa langit, hindi sa buong sandigutan. Sa lahat ng nilalang, sa langit, sa lahat ng nilalang, sa lupa at sa dagat. Walang hindi mapapay sa ilalim sa pagkahari ni Jesus. Walang ibang hari kundi siya lang. Hindi sino pa man, hindi tayo, hindi ako, hindi kayo, kahit sino pa man, hindi siya lang, si Jesus lang. Kaya kung maghahari-hari lang tayo sa buhay natin, uh, we are just pretenders. We are imposters. The good news is about Jesus Christ, the true King. Who is the boss? Nung ginawa daw ng God yung tao, nung nilalang ng God yung tao, nag-meeting nag, nag, uh, yung mga parts ng katawan. Sabi ng hari, ay sabi ng ulo, I control everything, so I should be the boss. Sabi ng leg, Tawa kita. Tawa tawa ang boss. Tawa tawa siya yung ulo. Sabi ng uh, mata, eh, kung wala ko, direction ba kayong mabubunan? Ako dapat ang 
Diyos. Sabi ng pa, kung wala ko, may mapuntaan ba kayo? Kahit nakakita na, kahit ng kamay, eh. ako rin. Kasi wala, wala akong magawa. Sabi ng Chan, hindi, wala ko, wala kayong lakas eh. Eh, dumating yung pwede, yung, nag-apply yung pwede. Kasi <laughs> ako ba, pwede ako maging, uh, gusto maging uh, boss. Pinagtawanan siya. Nag-tapon ka ng masura, gusto mo maging ano eh. Maging. Eh, nag-alit siya. Nagsara siya. <laughs> After three days, may yun yung chan, masakit na. O yung mata, malabo na. Mahina na yung paa, sa yung mamay. Sabi na, sige, ikaw na nga maging hari. <laughs> so, the moral of the story, kahit sino pwede mag-hari-harihan. Pero isa lang ang tunay na hari. It's Jesus. No, hindi tayo, hindi tayo pwede mag-hari-harihan sa life natin. And the good news tells us, tumating na yung tunay na hari. Jesus is the king. And he is a king for a reason. Hindi na, he's a king. Kasi hindi natin kaya iligtas yung sarili natin from sin and death. Only Jesus can save us from sin and death. And he came to save us from sin and death. Kaya ba natin iligtas yung sarili natin sa kamatayan? Sino ang tao na nabuhay ng hindi pa namatay? Gusto mo ba ikaw tagapagligtas ng sarili mo? Sino gusto mo maging tagapagligtas ng lifeguard pag nalununod ka na? Yung marunong lumangoy o yung lumalakad sa tubig? Sino ang savior gusto mo? Sino ang lifeguard? Yung may dala-dala na sa labida o yung naglalakad sa ibabaw ng tubig? See? We, we cannot save ourselves and we, we cannot depend on other Savior. Magdepend tayo dun sa naglalakad sa ibabaw ng tubig na Savior. So, Jesus is our Savior. And He came to give us a new beginning. After making a mistake, bawa nagkamali kayo sa may ginagawa kayo sa school, o may business kayo, tapos uh, nag, nag-fail, ano? Hindi mo alam kasi uh, na-obsolete yung technology mo agad so hindi mo na, na nakakasabay, no? Nagkagawa ka ng uh, uh, cellphone tapos biglang lumabas yung uh, yung ano, iPhone 6. Wala na, talo ka na, nalugi ka na agad. O paano kung may tao magsabi sa iyo, oh ito yung uh, ano ito yung uh, 1 million mag start ka ulit. Or sa school nagkamali ka no? Tapos sabi ng teacher mo sa iyo, okay lang yan. Let's start again. 'Di ba? Good news 'yun. Para kang uh, binigyan ng second chance. And and that's why the good news that's what the good news is. It's a message of a new beginning. Sabi The kingdom of God is near. The kingdom of God is near. It has time, no? Yung sabi sa tali ito is kairos. Hindi yung kronos na yung mga oras. Hindi the opportune time. So it has come. It is a new beginning. Kaya may uh, call to repent and to trust. Later we'll go to the word uh, wilderness. So the kingdom of God is near. Pwede yan near dahil uh, darating bukas. Pwede siya near dahil pwede nating puntahan after 2 kilometers na abo na natin. The kingdom of God is near because Jesus Christ is there. He is near. Sabi niya sa mga parasis, di ba? The kingdom of God is in your midst because nandun siya. So that is the kingdom of God. It is near. It is near. It is beside us. It is Malapit ka rin naman na gusto makarinig at hindi bingi o nabibingi-bingi. The word wilderness is used 11 times sa buong Gospel of Mark. So there are 16 chapters, so wala pang one time its verse. But in the chapter 1 lang, it is used 8 times and sa uh, unang 13 verses, it is used 4 times. What is the importance of the wilderness theme? Ano yung theme ng wilderness sa story of the story of God with His people? In Jeremiah chapter 2 verse 1, sabi dito, The word of the Lord came to me. 
go and proclaim to the, in the hearing of Jerusalem, I remember the devotion of your youth. How as a bride you loved me and followed me through the wilderness, through a land not sown. In Hosea chapter 2 verses 14 to 15, Therefore I am now going to allure her, sabi ng Panginoon sa Israel. I will lead her into the desert of the wilderness and speak tenderly to her. There she will sing as in the days of her youth, as in the day she came up out of Egypt. Ano yung naiisip nyo pa desert or wilderness? Does it enter your mind that it is a place for courtship? Does it enter your mind that dinala pala ng God yung Israel sa wilderness to woo her, para ligawan siya? Sabi sa Deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 2, nung ito kayo, yung mga chinelas nyo hindi na put put for 40 years. Yung mga damit nyo hindi na luma for 40 years. For 40 years, God pinakain sila ng pagkain na hindi pa natikman ng kahit mga sikap na nimuno nila. But even the patriarchs tasted the manna. But in the desert, God showed them His power, God showed them His care, God showed them His love, yung tender loving care ng God sa kanila. And to the prophets, that was God, nililigawan niya yung Israel. So, in chapters, in chapter 1, verses 1 to uh, 15, Jesus is led into the wilderness by the Holy Spirit. It is a signal of new beginning. Where Israel failed in the wilderness, Jesus triumphs. The author of sin is defeated. Satan, God of death, is thrown down. It is a new beginning for us, for humankind, and for the whole creation. Do you feel you are in the wilderness sometimes? Baka kailangan natin tingnan ang wilderness natin through the eyes of the prophets. So number, thirdly, the good news is a good news for ordinary people. Jesus called fishermen. Uh, hindi mga governors, hindi mga uh, hari, but he called ordinary people. He called them to repent and to trust in him, and he invited them, come, follow me. And there it says, sabi nga kay John, he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. Ano ang significance ng baptism of the Holy Spirit? Was the Holy Spirit, yeah, life. life, yes. Was the Holy Spirit given to everyone in Israel? Binigay ba ng Diyos yung Holy Spirit sa lahat? Only to Moses and to the 70 elders that was chosen, doon lang po binigay yung Holy Spirit. But the baptism of the Holy Spirit, the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, yun po yung uh, tinitingnan ng mga prophets. They say that the last days will come. Ito yung pinaka-promise ng God when He pours out His Spirit to the people. In Isaiah chapter 32, verse 15, till the Spirit is poured upon us from on high and the desert becomes a fertile field and the fertile field seems like a forest. And say, Ezekiel, For I will take you out of the nations. I will gather you from all the countries and bring you back into your own land. I will sprinkle clean water on you, and you will be clean. I will cleanse you from all your impurities and from all your idols. I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you. Ito yung pinakaantay ng Israel. Ito yung pinakaantay ng mga prophets when God gives the Holy Spirit to all people. The good news is that this time has come. 
as Peter told us no, when he quoted the prophecy of Joel. Binigay na ng God yung Holy Spirit to us. Para yung mga Fauberge egg na napakamahal. It's already given to us. We have received it. We are now partakers of the divine nature. Pwede ba sabihin niyo ulit yun? I am a partaker of the divine nature. We are partakers of the divine nature. Sabi nga sa Corinthians. We have this treasure in jars of clay. So we are the jars of clay. Hindi na natin kailangan maghintay pa na mapunta, mapromote tayo sa langit. Naghihintay ko ba kayo mapromote sa langit? Hindi ano? Wala. Wala. Pero hindi na po natin kailangan pa maghintay mapromote sa langit because right now, we have eternal life. Right now, we are partakers of the Holy Spirit. Right now, we are living eternal life. So hindi na po natin kailangan pa maghintay bago tayo mapunta sa heaven. Jesus Christ has come. Is the way prepared? Are the singers ready? Are the dancers in place? Na ikabit na ba yung mga wagayway? Let us prepare the way by applying what we have learned today. No? Na po yung application nito mga The ABC. Application ABC. Letter A, absolute loyalty. This is what God requires of us. Absolute loyalty. The verb sa Hebrew is shub. Gumalik, return. Sabi sa Greek, metanoia. No? You change. But this requires the whole of our being. Hindi po pwede na... Uh, yung iba, sabi nila, yung head lang. May yung head nila yung ma-transform. Uh, Ibig sabihin, marami sila ang pinag-aralan, nagdidipati sila sa theology. Pero yung head nila, yun yung uh, transform lang. So, pagdating sa langit, uh, yung ulo lang nila yung transform, yung katawan nila, hindi transform. Mahirap naman siguro yun. But, God requires all of us, lahat ng bahagi ng katawan natin, our hearts, our heads, our bodies, we are called to be absolutely loyal to the chosen King. We are called to let the life of Christ, the life of the Spirit, manifest in us. And this requires constant surrender. Hindi po ito isang surrender lang. Okay, nag-give up na ako kay God. Nag-baptize na ako. Tapos na. It requires daily communion with Him they surrender. Come follow me, Sabi Christ. Are we? Let's follow him. Kahit sa desert. Kahit sa wilderness. So, let's be part of sharing the good news to others. Para magmabuhay ulit. Kung ito nang lalapit sa atin. One way na para mabuhay yan. Para bumalik yung kinang nung uh, Fabrizio is to share it with others. To tell others the good news of Jesus Christ. Uh, number two, letter B, be loved by God. Allow yourselves, allow ourselves to be loved by God. This is our hope, yung love ng God. Ito yung hope natin. This is our living hope, God's love for us. <coughs> Sabi ng mga prophets, God courted Israel. Allow ourselves to feel His love. Sometimes, we feel unworthy. No? Sometimes, nagpaniwala uh, ka ba talaga na mahal na mahal ka ng God? Kagaya ng pagmamahal natin sa mga baby. Ganito ba talaga yung pagmamahal ng God sa atin? Alala niya yung scripture sa Hosea. Sabi ng God, ako yung nag ay nalikan niya yung Israel sa cheeks, siya nagturo maglakad. That's the way he sees us, his babies. He finds us worthy of his love. And the secret of transformation is an encounter 
with God's love. Matatransform po talaga tayo pag naramdaman natin yung pag-ibig na God sa atin. So allow ourselves to be loved by God. And sometimes, more often than not, to be loved by God requires us when He says, Come, follow me to the wilderness. And so let us see, come to a place or an attitude of total dependence on God. It's the wilderness experience of Israel. And it's an experience of many among us. I think all of us. Siyempre, nakakatakot sa di mo wilderness. Parang horror movie na kayo nakakatakot eh. Wilderness, yung mga nakakatakot na, na forest na ano, yung mga lumalabas na mga monsters na mga like werewolves and things. But the, wil but the wilderness is a place of hope. It's a place of a new beginning. It is where God is drawing us to Himself. Sabi ni, first, sabi ni Peter sa so 1 Peter suffering for doing good. Sometimes our wilderness can be like that. God is drawing us to Himself. In conclusion, remember, there is always a story behind the story. Meron laging kwento behind the story. The, the true story behind the service. And the truth is in the story of Jesus Christ. The King, the Savior, Yahweh, the Alpha and the Omega. The story is cosmic. It's spiritual, metaphysical, heavenly. No? Hindi lang po dito sa lupa. And the, the good news is we are part of that story. We are part of this cosmic story. We are part of this spiritual story. Hindi lang panlupa yung buhay natin. Sometimes, ang hirap makita tumingin behind what we see with our eyes. But the things that we see with our eyes will fade away. The things that we can touch, they uh, nasisira, nagrarat, nagdi-decompose. But the things that we cannot see with our eyes, they are forever. Maybe sometimes we think God is deaf. Bigyan yung Panginoon. But God is not deaf. We are the ones na mahina yung pandemic. We are the ones who are deaf. Or worse, pretend to be deaf. Ah, Bibigi-bigi yan. Mabuti pa yung totoong bigi, pwedeng lagyan ng uh, hearing aid. Yung nagbibingi-bingihan, wala pong hearing aid sa nagbibingi-bingihan. So, wala pong namot dyan. So, on the other hand, God has a good news to share. He shared it with us and it's meant for other people. It's the good news about His Son, about Jesus Christ, about His Savior, about the King. Let us be absolutely loyal to Him because He gave His life for us. Let us be loved by Him. Let us depend and trust on Him. In the, our last uh, slide, God speaks to us. Sabi niya, This is my Son, whom I love. Listen to Him. Listen to Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for the good news. Thank you for the good news about your Son, Jesus Christ. Thank you for the Savior who walks on water. Thank you, Father, for a new beginning. And thank you that this hope is for all of us, even ordinary people like us. Help us to walk with you, to 
follow you, we love you, even if you bring us to the wilderness. Even if sometimes we find ourselves struggling, teach us to trust in you, to depend on you. Open the eyes of our hearts that we may see how much, how deep, how wide your love is for us. Which you have shown us through the sacrifice of your beloved Son, Jesus. In his name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.